my, 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 my. Woo! Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Let's praise the Lord together. Put your hands. Woo! My, 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 my. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing and we are glad within this day. With so much going on around us, taking the time, taking the time to thank him, taking the time to feed on his word, his word, his word is the word that nourishes you and I as we are on this journey. Oh, we are moving into a new season and new things that are going on. And recognize the presence and the power of the God that we serve. I just want to take some time to uh, just do a little um, housekeeping. Housekeeping. And, 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 and look, as you come, as you come on this Sunday morning and every Sunday morning to praise the Lord in this matter. Don't keep it to yourself. This is not for you to keep it to yourself. But as you are being blessed, for you to think about somebody you know, might be a family member, might be a stranger, might be somebody in the neighborhood. Pray. I always remind people, you need to pray first. Sometimes people go running to do stuff. And they mess up. They mess up themselves and they mess up the person they're trying to help. Pray about it first. Because it is that Holy Spirit that helps us recognize what is our assignment. Y'all didn't hear that. What is your assignment? And not just something you think you're going to do because it's in you in the moment. No, pray about it, my brothers and sisters. And the hand of God will move. The Holy Spirit will do what it needs to do. And you will be blessed and someone else will be blessed. I, I want to lift up to you some things. That, and, no, and number one, my brothers and sisters, especially from St. Mark. And even if you're not from St. Mark, but you like to continue to fellowship with us every now and then. Uh, I, I, I want you to make sure, uh, especially St. Markers, that, that you are on our constant contact list. Constant contact list. That 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 That's that information that goes out to us on Friday. Early in the morning on Friday, that information is there for you so you can keep up on what is going on and what is not going on. So please take the time and encourage others because if your name is not on the list, you're not going to get the email. And if you know somebody who doesn't do email, then step up. And be the mail person for them so that they will get that information on Friday or Saturday. But they will receive that information so that they will be well informed in terms of what we're doing. And even as we are in the midst of this time and this pandemic and everything else, doesn't matter because God is with us. And I just want to give to you, if you have your pencil and paper ready, I, I, I have this kind of series that I'm working on in the Gospel of John, 1 John. And, 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 and last Sunday, last Sunday, we were looking at 1 John, 1st chapter, verses 1 through 2nd chapter, verse 2. And, and, and looking at and reminding ourselves, as John is trying to remind us, this is 1 John now. And remind us that we have an advocate. Someone who looks out for us. Because I know I get into trouble sometimes. I know you get into trouble sometimes. We get in trouble sometimes. And it's good to have an advocate who will plead our case. When we have messed up. When we are in trouble. We have someone who will advocate for us. But if he don't know you. It's hard for him to advocate for you. Okay, you got that? And on this Sunday, we're looking at 1 John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. And from the thought, this is what you are. This is what you are. 1 John, third chapter, verses 1 through 7. This is what you are. 
And then uh, on April the 25th, 1 John, I'm giving you this stuff so you can read ahead of time, so you see where we are going, where the journey is taking us. Uh, so on April the 25th, 1 John, 3rd chapter, verses 16 to 24. And the message is entitled, Love in Truth and in Action. Love in Truth and in Action. And then if we are still moving in that direction for the month of May, 1 John, 4th chapter, verses 7 through 21. 1 John, 4th chapter, verses 7 through 21. Love one another. Love one another. One more time. Love one another. And then on May 9th, 1 John, Chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Three that testify. Three that testify. And then on May 16th, 1 John, 5th chapter, verses 9 through 13. 1 John, 5th chapter, verses 9 through 13. And that is entitled, Whoever Has the Son. Whoever has the Son. All right. That's your assignment to kind of look on that, feed on that. You don't have to wait till the Sunday. You got it ahead of time. So go ahead and do what you need to do. But you know, it's a lot that is going on and a lot that we're having to struggle with and deal with. And that's why singing is so important, that as we're getting ready to serve God, as we're getting ready to get into his word, to have, you know, when you don't have the choir around all the time, all, uh, yeah, you're at home, so you can sing any way you want to, and you will be okay. And the song is coming to my heart, and I, I want y'all to sing along with me because uh, I, I think it's a familiar song once you hear it. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands with me. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on and dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Come on and dance. Before the Lord, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, it has been said that hallelujah is the highest praise. The highest praise that you can give and, and, and lift up and sing about. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you for who you are and what you are and for this mighty long way that you have blessed us with. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I mean, it's just, you know, sometimes you got to move away from the negativity and come into the positivity. And I want to share with you the, the, uh, the, the, 
scripture that we have for today. The scripture that we have for today. Let me make sure I got the right one now. Because last Sunday was that advocate. Okay. Here we go. 1 John the 3rd chapter. Beginning with. The first verse. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, that when he is revealed, we, you and I, will be like him. For we will see him, we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to us to take away our sin. And in him, my brothers and sisters, there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. Let me say that again. Woo! No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him. Or knows him. Little children. Little children. Let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right. Is righteous. Just as he is righteous. Oh gracious God we thank you. For hearing. Your word. For hearing this scripture that you would have us to hear at this time, in this moment, to help us as we continue on this earthly journey. And we ask even now, even now, Lord, we ask and pray for the presence of your Holy Spirit, that the word that is heard this day, this time, will be not given in vain. And somebody will be lifted up. Somebody will be saved. Somebody will have that desire to become one of your disciples. So have your way, Lord, even now. Have your way. And in the midst of it all, those of us who know you, those of us who serve you, will be so careful to continue to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. And every heart said amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters, trouble is still all around us. There still is some mess going on. There still is some hurt that is going on. There still is some disappointment that is going on. And even as we're still dealing with the virus and trying to find out, figure out which shot we're going to get, as we still are hearing stories of people still, still dying, still not taking precautions, still ignoring what ought not be ignored, and not recognizing and realizing if we are a disciple of Jesus Christ, if we understand the Master's way, 
If we understand how we are called to be obedient to his will in his way, we're willing to trust and should be able to trust the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to help us when we are confused, when we're messed up, when we're torn down, when we're hurting. And many times it is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And see, many times we ignore that, don't we? We ignore that, that presence, that power. We think we don't need him. And yet, God has provided his presence for us. And so as we're looking at and as we're listening to what is going on and what is happening around us, as we still are hearing about situations where lives are being cut down, folk are still being messed up. Folk around us maybe even in our community, are getting so frustrated. They're hurting. They're in pain because maybe there is the fear that they may lose their job. They may lose their house. And my brothers and sisters, keep your eyes open and your ears ready hearing about Churches that are already closing down. Churches that are already disappearing. And yet, I know the God I serve is a God who takes care of his children. But you know how it is in families. Children don't always want to listen. Children want to do their thing. And that's all right. I, I, I know that as I, let me see what's going on. I know that as I was on my journey on early on, I didn't, I didn't want to deal with what my mama wanted me to do. I wanted to do that stuff I wanted to do. Somebody ought to say amen. We think we know it all can do it all, and so we ignore certain things. Even as we look at the Bible, we, 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 we look at the Bible, we read the Bible, but does the Bible read us? Do we let the Word of God read us? Do we really begin to not just quote the Word, but become more like the Word? I see, in order to do that, you have to get rid of selfishness. And that's why the writer here was saying, first of all, said, see what love the Father has given us. He has given us his love on the cross. He had given us that love when Jesus died. He had given us the love even when Jesus was alive and we were able to learn what we needed to learn if we were going to be followers of the way. If we were going to be ready to get behind Jesus. To hear what he had to tell you and me. He knows me. He knows you. He knows us. He knows all of us. He knows already what we are in need of. But we turn our nose up and go the other way. And my brothers and sisters, think about how it was for you in the church when you were growing up. And how it was and how it became when you got a little older. And wanted to do things differently. And we have young people today. It's not that they don't know the Lord or love the Lord. But they are not necessarily willing to be caught up in a building. Or caught up in doing something every Sunday. But when they're ready to be fed. When, when something occurs or something happens. And they want to know a little bit more. And more and more about who they really are. And when one begins to really recognize and realize whose we are and how much it is that God loves you, loves me, even at our worst moment, worst time. Come on, we ought not wait until we're old and decrepit and can barely move, can barely talk to then say, now I give my life to Jesus. 
Mm -mm. Remember, Jesus did say, I go to prepare a place for you so that where you are, or where I am, <laughs> you can also be. Jesus made some promises that he let his disciples know what happened after his death. But he also did some things while he was yet alive, walking among the people. And walking among those who the scribes and the Pharisees were turning up their noses at. People who were suffering, people who were in need, people who were lost, people who were confused. And how many times have you found yourself in that situation? Lost, confused, hurting. And many times hurting people hurt others. That's why there have been these situations where needlessly that have to happen. But when someone is at the end of their rope, when someone does not believe that there's a brighter side somewhere. Someone who's been looking down so long, looking down at the ground so long, not ready and willing to lift up your head and listen. Sometimes we spend too much talking, don't we? And sometimes the talk is not talk that is really fruitful talk. And so then when we come crumbling down, then we call. Beloved, we are God's children now. That's what the writer says. We are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he, when he, when we allow Jesus when we allow ourselves to become his disciples, he is revealed to us in a powerful way. And in that way, we want to stick close to him. You know how it is when you want, you know, somebody's looking out for you. Someone is there. If trouble comes your way, they're ready to deal with the trouble. That's how Jesus is. That's how the Holy Spirit is. And it says when he is revealed, we will be like him. Don't you want to be more and more like Jesus? Don't you want to be more and more like Jesus? You, we, we, we say we're a child of God. But how about a disciple of Jesus Christ? How about doing things in such a way that people are amazed at what we do and how we do? And the writer says, and all who have this hope, all of those who have this hope of seeing him as he is, and seeing you as you are, seeing me as I am. To purify ourselves, just as he is pure. The writer says everyone who, who, who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. And we, we do sin, don't we? We do fall short. We do make mistakes. Uh, but, 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 but the question is, what do we do when we realize and recognize we done messed up? We do communion at least every first Sunday. And communion is a time when we recognize and realize they ain't looking at nobody else. But it's a time when we recognize and realize that we have fallen short along the way. We've hurt somebody. We've hurt another, a number of people. And we act like it does not matter. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. We are robbers, cheats, all that negative stuff about our humanity together with one another. Sin, he says, is lawlessness. 
We feel, we act like the laws do not appeal to us, especially when we are young. Especially when we want it our way and anybody else can take the highway. Somebody says, there's a highway to heaven. <laughs> there's a highway to heaven. And talking about the righteous as they are able to travel on that highway. You know that he was revealed to us to take away sins. In him there is no sin. He who was without sin. He who is the leader, the way maker. But my brothers and sisters, we have to have ourselves together. We leave our homes. We don't know if we're coming back, do we? We go here, there, and everywhere. And we don't know if we're coming back. We don't know if we have time. When I can't do nothing else to give myself over to Jesus. Come on, my brothers and sisters, young, old, employed, unemployed, struggling and having much. As we let go and let God, as we are, have that desire to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing that. I'm pressing that as my time before me is getting less and less. I'm pressing that because that's what I believed when I first came to St. Mark. That this is a place when they came and, and, and brought us to the church in the middle of the night. Rochelle and I both to find out whether or not we would be a good fit for this congregation. And who would have known that we would be here this long? But the journey is coming to an end. But as we're in the midst of this pandemic, as we're having to adjust and do things differently from what we've been used to, somebody ought to say, used to don't live here no more. The hand of God is moving away to have us look at ourselves, to have us look at others around us. This pandemic has caused us to look at life in a different kind of way from the oldest to the youngest. And for those of us who claim to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, claim to be the follower of Jesus, claim to be empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit. We got to take that reality now. No one who abides in him. No one who abides in him sins, it says. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. It's not my word, my brothers and sisters. It's not my word. It is the word that is recorded in the Bible. Basic. It's, 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 it's. Basic information before we leave earth. Basic. But powerful. Let me say that again. Basic, but powerful. And so how are you doing on your journey? Who are you helping along the way? Who are you opening up holy doors for so that they can come forth and not people finding and feeling that those church folk just turn up their noses at us? In the community, how are you known? In the workplace, how are you known? Wherever you may be, however you may be, how are you known? How do people, what do people think about you? No one who abides in him, no one who is with him. If we are, if we are, Mr. Said, this is what you are. Nobody chose their race, their gender. Nobody chose how we came in and in what manner we came into the world. We came in through the womb, out of the womb. We didn't have a choice, did we? 
But even then, and the scripture says in the Old Testament that he knew you even before you were in your mama's womb. And if he knew you, he knew about the design, the design, the purpose that he had just for you. And when we don't do what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do, sometimes other folk get hurt. Folk get messed up because we didn't take the assignment seriously. And we are living in serious times, serious moments right now. And do we have the luxury of waiting, 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 waiting? This pandemic is going to still be with us for a little while, my brothers and sisters. It ain't going to be over overnight. It keeps on changing. And isn't it interesting? It can change, but we change if not. Some of us, we don't change. Some of us, we don't recognize, don't want to recognize, you know, when God is calling you, when God is trying to talk to you, and you put your hands over your ears, like, nah, 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 I can't hear you, I can't hear you, nah, 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 I'm going to do what I do. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. And in that seventh verse, little children, you know, there have been communities of faith who had some stuff that has happened. I don't know if you saw that Aretha Franklin. Is that Aretha Franklin? I believe it is. <laughs> her story about what she had to do and about her dad. I think I got it right. If I don't have it right, I know some of you know what I'm talking about. You've seen the movie. And you saw how dad was, who was the preacher. And I know if I got the wrong thing, Rochelle going to let me know or y'all going to let me know. <laughs> but see, even among those of us who are holy, Temptation does come. There are those moments when we want to forget about God. Because what is before us, we believe, is what is good for us. And not listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. I don't know about you, but when I go to bed at night, I believe the Holy Spirit is there watching over me through the night. Watching over Rochelle and I through the night. Because you never know what happens when you lie down on that bed. You don't know whether or not you're going to be getting up. You don't know if you're going to be feeling good when you get up. But one thing I do know. The Holy Spirit does walk with me, talk with me, and remind me how I do belong to Jesus. Little children... Let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to look out for one another. Take care of one another. Make sure we're checking in with one another. And even checking in with the stranger. Even checking in. With those who are lost, those who may not even look like us sometimes. It has been a privilege, it has been a blessing to serve as long as I have served at the St. Mark United Methodist Church. I never would have thought I would be at a church this long. But looking over my history, I realize and recognize that every church I've been to, it seems like we've had building projects when I was there. Because I believe if we are a kingdom people, we need to expand. That we need to grow. And not about us, but about the others who have not yet joined us. I remember down in Turner Station, had a little kitchen in the back. Sanctuary. 
And in the back was a fellowship hall that wasn't that big. And before we left, they had a kitchen like nobody's business. A fellowship hall. Office space. And even when we had office, I had a real big office. And as we were looking at some things with the young people in our community, and a woman came in and was willing to work with our kids to work on math skills and other skills. And we even got computers from Apple Corporation. But the only room that was big enough to take in those computers was my office. My big, spacious office. But there was a need, and when there's a need, we need to do something. God is trying to tell us something. God was trying to tell me. So I moved into a small, small office as opposed to that big office. That big office. So my brothers and sisters, the clock is still ticking. Let us take care of ourselves. Family first. We have that family responsibility in the household. In the household. I'm not talking about all of the family connected, but even in your household, you have that responsibility that what goes on in your household. You have that responsibility if you know that there's someone who is at home by themselves. They're single. They're at home by themselves. That someone has already reached out and someone has taken the responsibility to make sure that they check in with that person all the time. To make sure that they're all right and make sure that all their needs have been taken care of. That's what disciples do. And sometimes even to drive by and leave a package, a mysterious package, a mystery package that is full of stuff that we know some folk do need. To bring a smile to somebody's face. This, my brothers and sisters, is what you are, what I am. A disciple of Jesus Christ. I, I might have a little title, attached, but that, 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 the main thing, and the main thing is always the main thing. The main thing is I have that title of being a disciple by choice. Wanting to be his disciple, wanting to hear what he has to say to me, wanting to feel the movement of the Holy Spirit in my life to guide me and direct me to make sure I'm doing the right things. And trusting and believing that when we work it out and we're looking at other people who are down and out, that he sees all that. That he sees all that. This is what you are. Or this is what you can be. To let go. And let God. Do only. What he can do. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Freely. God ain't gonna rob you. You got to be ready to let go of that which hinders you. Let go of that which is not good for you. And always remember, you will never, ever have enough. You will never, ever have enough. If you don't need, if you don't begin to recognize and realize. That some of this stuff is God has blessed me with it so I can share it with others. So my brothers and sisters, continue throughout this day. Continue throughout each day and the weeks to come. And every now and then, if you want to give me a holler, let me know what has happened, what you've done differently. What you share to remind me and remind one another that St. Mark is still a community of faith where we look out for one another, 
and look out for those who are in need, those who are struggling, because you never know when you might be entertaining an angel or angels who come ready to bless you, me, bless us, because we do have a ministry who does not judge. But we have a ministry, ministries that help shape people so that they too can become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Gracious God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. And I pray that as we continue throughout our day, we will do some reflections on ourselves first. We will do reflections on ourselves first and then begin to reflect with and for those in our households, be it a spouse, be it our children, whoever's in the household. Let it more and more be a place where disciples are birthed, not waiting to come into the church and come to a building, but to come into that environment, in the house that has now become a home. May grace and mercy be with you throughout the days to come. In the name of Jesus, amen. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.